Um, this is some Ralph news. Uh, he posted embarrassing black worshipping tweets on Twitter again. He says, Good, in reply to Drake is not done dissing Kendrick Lamar via academics. Good, he finna get bodied even worse next time. Dot already said he had five or six more in the chamber. Rami Babar says, imagine being white and caring about this, which is a very interesting thought from Rami Babar. Ethan Ralph says, imagine writing out this tweet and thinking, would give a fuck. Plus, I'm from Memphis, felon, and two kids at a wedlock. I have an honorary black card. Um, and then in this, he has some more black people music that he's interested in. It says, Dear Mama, but Yee's live performance of Hey Mama at the Grammys after she died is one of the most moving things I've ever seen in my entire life. We'll definitely watch again later today. And then he posts more black people stuff. Um, I find it extremely embarrassing that he claims to have Dixie heritage and that he has families who fought under the stars and bars uh, for states' rights and slavery. And then he's like, I love black people, man. I just can't imagine what life would be without black people. I love black people. So many goddamn much. I would get on all fours for black. Black men say, hey, Piggy, you get on all fours and you squeal for me, boy. You squeal for me. You'd be like, yes, master, I squeal for you. I squeal for you real good, master. And that's how much I love them black folk. Black folk are like the light of my life. When I hear black music, I think, damn, I love black music. When I see black people on TV, I think, damn, I love black people on TV. I love seeing black people all day, every day. That's the worst thing about being in Mexico is that I don't see no black people no more. Uh, but as it turns out, um, someone pointed, reminded me accurately that Ethan Ralph is a Dixie boy and his ancestors were uh, members of the union and were union soldiers and actually fought for black people. When you hear about how America killed hundreds of thousands of white people to free black people, they're talking about the ancestry of Ethan Oliver Ralph himself. And one more thing, this was actually what, um, What's his face? Hoffman wanted me to talk about. Um, Teddy Feaser and Ethan Ralph have joined forces to try and get uh, Kinoche. I, I, I'm holding back tears for Kinoche, but they uh, organized a flagging event to get Kinoche banned, and it worked. Kinoche says he's been banned like eight fucking times at this point, like just this year from the false flagging stuff, so he'll probably get his account back, but... Ralph's happy. She says, I feel like this might be the best day ever. Ah, ha, 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 ha. So in Ethan Ralph's entire life, because he's like 80 fucking years old now, he looks back on many thousands of days that he spent on Earth, and he's like, yeah, that time that Kino Shea got suspended on X. Definitely a high point. Definitely a high point. One, one for the history books, if I, if I do say so myself. Will I ever sit down and write that Keel Stream autobiography that I've been kicking around in the old noggin for a while now? That day Kinoche got banned on Zitter. Gotta be up there. Awesome. I think this is him celebrating it. Let's see. I, and that, that's really all it is. Is you know, it makes them feel like they're accomplishing something. Like they all successfully were able to smear my reputation. They were successfully able to get me to stop streaming, right? They couldn't do that with Nick. This is Feaser coping, by the way. Something of importance. Because, like, let's just be honest, I was never, I was never going to be a breakout star in the, uh, in, in the streaming industry. Like, that was never going to happen. I gave it a shot, right? I didn't know how things would go, but it just was never going to happen. And that's why, you know, in a way, and people will say this is cope, but in a way, it's kind of a good thing that things turned out the way that they did because it pushed me. It put it basically it pushed me forward in life, and it gave me the opportunity to move on to something else that is, you know, far more uh, fruitful and and better off for me. So, if it, if it wasn't for if it wasn't for the problems I've endured as a nobody streamer under the boot of a Mexican man child. I would never have learned the joys of going to flea markets and buying kids' toys and selling them on eBay. If I hadn't have suffered down there, I wouldn't be up where I am now. Thank you, Nick Fuentes. Thank you. You know, I gave it a shot, and it just it didn't work, and that's okay. I mean, I, I, most people who try to get into streaming, they fail. <laughs> it, it, it's hard. Yeah. It's, it's a lot harder than people realize, and that's why, actually, I have a lot of uh, respect for what you do because like honestly you're 
Imagine saying those words. Ethan Ralph. I respect I know the struggle of being a streamer. Like Ralph has viewers cuz he's a fucking train wreck. But <laughs> most people won't would line up to see a train wreck. And even then he only has 200 people. You're very very good and you're extremely talented. It like people don't realize how hard it is to do what you're doing. It's actually cr like cuz the thing is is you're not like the biggest streamer in the world, right? No. But you're still you're pulling these huge guests. You're hosting these panels. You're hosting these debates. Like you're just a you're a content machine. People don't, you know, because it's uh, like it's not. Dude. It's not Dude, I feel like I'm watching gay porn or something right now. You know how you get like that that aversion, like when you see something that like icks you out and you have to like look away. Hearing this man, this grown adult man who's already so old, he's entered a stage of male pattern baldness, like kneel before Monster Mash and do the graveyard smash and be like, bro, you put in so much work. You're such a hard worker. Your job is so hard. Oh, man, it's it's so hard doing what you do, Mr. Ralph. Huh? It's so hard. It's like I'm watching two men fuck <laughs> it's, it's like gross <laughs> it like icks me out labor it's not like construction people don't realize how and, and actually i think uh i think hassan made a comment about this recently where he was talking about sort of like how mentally taxing streaming yeah, he is got dragged a for it because he went a little yes. too far with the point but the point he was making uh mm. Now mm. oh my god ralph got icked out did you hear that hold up because he went a little yes. too far with the point he went a little too far with the point like bro you're trying to swallow the whole nut sack you're just supposed to do the dick why are you trying to eat my whole cock and balls down there oh my god get off me you fucking maniac i'm not ready for this <laughs> i'm not ready for this level of commitment but the point he was making um now he went too far by saying it's harder than a you know a regular job and all this and that um, <laughs> really agree with that i mean manual labor etc definitely that's harder and more taxing. even ralph but... even ralph is like dude have you ever like lifted anything in your entire life have you ever like dug a hole have you ever gone outside and dug a ditch in your yard while the sun's out it's really difficult imagine doing that for a job that would suck ass you don't even get paid that well <laughs> even ralph was like whoa buddy why don't you calm down there with a little rhetoric your rhetoric's a bit insane Fascinating. Thank you. Mr. Hoffman, checks can be sent to the P.O. Box in South Charleston. Thank you for watching this clip by Colonel J. This is the King of Bold here. Remember to like and subscribe. Juice!